Is it wrong that my boyfriend wants me to watch Rate Corn? Huge trigger warning here. Please do not watch if you are sensitive to this. Take care of yourselves. I love you. My boyfriend and I have been together for eight months. I just turned 21 and he's 33. He's always kind of been the perfect boyfriend, but a few months ago he started acting more like my dad. It started with him just telling me what to do, and then eventually he started trying to give me advice about everything I did. For example, he'd tell me how I needed to talk to my landlord and small things like that. And now I feel like it's gotten to the point where he wants to completely control me. Now here's the thing. I'm young and I don't know if I'm just overreacting or if I'm reading too much into this, but I know that sometimes he makes me feel really uncomfortable. Only two months after dating, he asked me to marry him, and I didn't say yes right away, and this really upset him. He accused me of wanting to stay single so that I could date other guys. I told him that I thought I was too young to get married, and that we needed to get to know each other before we talked about marriage. But here's the thing. He started getting so upset that eventually I said yes. So as of now, we're kind of engaged, but I don't really want to. He wants us to go buy a ring, and he wants to formally ask my parents. I called my parents to tell him about it, and they were totally against the idea. I agree with my parents. I haven't told my boyfriend, but things get worse. He started showing me the corn he watches. When I didn't want to watch it, he got really mad at me. Part two is a uh, bit wrong that my boyfriend wants me to watch rate corn when he wants to do sexy time. Huge trigger warning. Please don't watch this if you are sensitive. Take care of yourselves. I love you. I was laying on the bed and he flipped his laptop over. That's when he says, here, watch this. It was kind of like regular corn. Nothing too disturbing, but it made me feel really uncomfortable. I told him it looked funny and he said, why would it look funny? You don't like it? That's when I said, not really. At that point in my life, I had never looked up anything related to corn. It's not something that I was interested in. So I felt really uncomfortable. He turned the computer on and I couldn't see the screen anymore. For the next three hours, he stayed on his laptop in his room watching corn. I felt like I was interrupting him. I went to the kitchen and decided to cook. When dinner was ready, I asked him to come eat and he left me waiting another hour. When he finally comes out, his face was completely changed. And for the rest of the night, he was really quiet and kind of rude. A few days later, he brought up the engagement again. He asked me if I had time to go look at rings and reluctantly, I said, yeah. He went into a jewelry store and he told me to just choose one. I told him that I didn't want to rush it and he said, it's fine, just choose it now. Later on that night, I asked him to drop me off at my place, but he said he wanted me to stay over at his. When we get to his apartment, he gets on his laptop again. That's when he shows me what he was watching. It was rape corn. He tried to kiss me and I felt sick to my stomach. Part three, is it wrong that my boyfriend wants to watch rape corn when he wants to do sexy time? Huge trigger warning here. Please do not watch this if you are sensitive. Take care of yourselves. I love you. That's when he showed me the rape corn on his laptop. And he just lunged at me and tried to kiss me. I felt sick to my stomach. He asked me to sit on the bed, but I said no. That's when he said why. I told him I wasn't comfortable with what he was watching and that I really didn't like it at all. Then he just rolled his eyes and got mad at me. For the next five minutes, he called me a prude and told me that what he was doing was completely normal. And I guess part of me really did want to believe him and he managed to convince me. I asked him to close the laptop because I could hear the noise. He said I was overreacting and told me to go home. So I did. Didn't speak to him for three days until finally he came over to my place. He acted like nothing had happened. Now here's the thing. I don't know if it's a normal thing or not, but I don't think it is. I haven't googled it or anything because I don't want to, but I also haven't talked about it to anybody. What scares me is that he's gonna want to do stuff like that and I'm not comfortable with it. It also concerns me that he has fantasies about that. That's something I would never ever want him to do. I made us dinner in my apartment and I decided to bring up the topic. That's when he said, can you just get over it? It's done. But I kept pushing and asked him some questions. I asked him how long he'd been watching that and if it made him, you know what. He said he'd only been watching it for a few days and that he already stopped and that he wouldn't do it again. Then he said, you have to stop being a prude. I want to be with somebody who willing to try new stuff. Otherwise, I'd probably end up cheating. This actually really scared me, so I told him that I would try anything as long as I was comfortable with it. I don't want him to leave me because I do love him, but what he was watching on his laptop really made me nervous. I don't think I have the courage to break up with him or anything, and I do want to be with him. I just want to find a way to help him with this and not make it a big deal. I haven't told anybody in my family or my friends. Maybe I should just to see what their reaction is. What should I do? Bye. Very well-known influencer who is hooking up with a famous football player who has a wife and kids. Am I the asshole? Claimer is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. Lost my job in early 2020, obviously due to COVID. Instead of looking for another job, I set my mind to becoming famous on social media. I knew that I could make it happen, but I didn't know how yet. I did some research, so I basically started copying everything everybody else did. Like all the other famous influencers, I dabbled in fashion, makeup, lots of lifestyle content, but finally I landed on bikini content. This just put me on a new level. I started gaining tons of followers. After posting every single day for about six months, I was almost at 400,000. This is when all the DMs started rolling in. Had really, really famous rappers, actors, athletes, comedians, other influencers, big YouTubers. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, of course, I would reply to all of their DMs. Some offered to fly me out to see them, and others were living in the same city that I was. So, I basically started going out on dates. The first date I ever went on was with a rapper. I don't want to give too many details because I think you guys could guess who this is. He was very popular in 2010s. I mean, he's still popular now, but he made a lot of good music then. Anyway, he had me come over to his house, spent the night at his house, and we basically talked the entire night. Surprisingly, we had really good conversations, and that was that. 
that. And I got a DM from a really big football player who I knew was already married and had kids. That didn't stop me from messaging him back. Part two is up. Well-known influencer who's hooking up with a famous football player who's married and has kids. Mighty asshole. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. When I saw his DM, I quickly answered. Sent me little hard eyes. So I replied back with some hearts. Then he asked me where I live. I told him that I was in LA and he said, okay, cool. I can fly you out. I said, sure. Literally the next day, I was flying first class to go see this guy. Got me a suite at a really nice hotel. He said he would show up at 7, but he actually showed up at 11 p.m. At this point, I was already in my pajamas and my skincare. Once he came up to the room, he apologized for being so late. That's when he said that he liked that I wasn't wearing makeup. Which makes me laugh so much because before he arrived, I had a full face of makeup on and a freaking cocktail dress and heels. He said that I was a natural beauty. <laughs> That's when he basically ordered the entire menu from the hotel. He ordered steak, pasta, pancakes, waffles, French toast, champagne, and a bunch of other stuff. He asked me if I wanted a salad. I said yes. While we were waiting for the food, he started kissing me and we basically ended up doing it. It happened really quick. It was over in like two minutes. Afterward, he kissed me and then the food came. He proceeded to eat almost everything that he ordered, but he left me some salad and fries. That was it. It's like he was telling me that he only wanted me to eat salad. After that, he started asking me questions like if I was dating other people. I said no, but I was going on dates. When he told me that he only wanted me to be exclusive with him, that he would fly me out whenever he was available. I said yes, but I knew that I wasn't going to go through with that because I'm not going to be traveling for him all the time. Part three is up. Well-known influencer who's hooking up with a famous football player who has wife and kids. Am I the asshole? Claimers is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. That's when he told me he wanted me to be exclusive with him, but he would basically fly me out whenever he wanted. Obviously, he said yes to his face, but I was not planning on it. Would I be flying around the country to go see this one guy? Good news is when I got back home, I had a bunch of new DMs. So I went on a few more dates. I went on a date with a very famous YouTuber. It was super fun, really casual, and didn't really expect anything from me, which was really nice. When we went on our date, he actually treated me like a queen. If this guy asked me to be his girlfriend, I would totally say yes in a heartbeat. Then the football player actually ended up calling me the same night that I was on the date with the YouTuber. I decided to go to the bathroom and answer the phone. That's when he started acting all jealous and asked me where I was. He said that I should be home resting and ready to go see him again. He asked me if I could fly out the next day. I said no because I did have a modeling job, thank God. I mean, a girl needs to make money. Then he said that he would start giving me an allowance of $5,000 a month. I said yes to in a heartbeat. So I ended up canceling the modeling job. I flew out the next day to go see him and he actually gave me the $5,000. said that every time I saw him, he would give me more. Here's the thing, he has a wife and kids and I do feel bad about that. This has been happening now for a few months. I have more money now than I ever had. And I'm still modeling on the side, so I'm making my own money. And I'm still going out on dates with other guys. What should I do? Am I wrong for demanding my girlfriend to change her dress for a wedding? This happened during this weekend. Me being in my early 30s and my girlfriend in her late 20s. I was invited to a wedding ceremony of a colleague and I could bring someone with me. I asked my girlfriend that I've been dating for a year if she would like to join me and she was really happy because she apparently loves weddings. Since we don't live together, I drove to pick her up so we'd have some time to spare before the ceremony. She's also wearing an off-white dress that was rather ornate. As she comes out, she looks really beautiful and has obviously put in time to fix her hair and makeup. As she got in, I told her she looked stunning, but I asked if she could change into a different colored dress for the ceremony. I'm not one for etiquette by far, but one of the few things I have heard everywhere is that you should not wear white to a wedding. Unless you're the bride. She became pretty upset and wanted to know what was wrong with her dress. I said that it would be inappropriate to wear a white or off-white dress unless you're the bride and that it's like wedding law or something, trying to be lighthearted about it. She rolled her eyes and said that it was an outdated tradition about women and virginity and that when her friends got married everyone wore white and that it's not a big thing anymore. I still thought she should change to another color but white or almost white because my colleague was getting married and we had no idea how she felt about it. My girlfriend became really upset and told me I was trying to control what she was wearing and that it was abusive. Uh, which honestly made me really upset in her. I said something along the lines of, Duck, well you shouldn't go to a wedding with an abuser then. And then I told her to get the F out of my car. She began to cry and wanted to apologize and give me a hug. But I just told her to get out, which she did. To clarify, we never left the driveway by her home. I did not drop her off in the middle of nowhere or anything like that. I drove off and she called and texted me a bunch. I answered, I don't want to talk right now, and then turned my phone off and attended the ceremony. The bride was the only one that was wearing white, so I feel as if my gut feeling was in the right. When I got home, my phone had blown up by text from her and her best friend saying that I was being inconsiderate and controlling and should apologize for my behavior. I feel as if I was in the right since it was my colleague's wedding and it was better to be safe than sorry, but I'm also not sure if I was being an asshole about the situation. I don't understand people's obsession with trying to wear white to someone else's wedding. You don't even know the person either. It's your boyfriend's a colleague's wedding. Like, huh? Am I wrong for saying my sister probably has a different dad? My mom and my dad are both super white and super blonde. My brother is 29 male and 23 male and me, 26 female, are also super white and super blonde. My sister Nicole, 20 female, has pretty dark skin and 3C natural hair. I wish I could just assume that Nicole has darker skin and curlier hair due to some strange genetic glitch, but I can't. My mom used to have a very close friend who would visit when my dad was gone, and he was black. When Nicole was born, her friend stopped coming around and my parents spent a lot of time fighting. Nicole knows nothing about my mom's special friend. 
Anyway, we were all eating dinner at my parents' house over the weekend, and Nicole mentioned that she wanted to take a 23andMe genetics test. Ah, she's 23 and doesn't know that she is not her father's biological daughter. Okay, my parents got really uncomfortable and told her not to do it. My mom started saying that those tests were a government control mechanism, which is something she would never normally say. It developed into a fight between Nicole and my parents, and my parents ended up storming into the kitchen. Nicole tried to get me and my brothers to side with her. She kept going on about how crazy it was that her mom thought the DNA tests were some sort of conspiracy and that she was adamant she was going to take one. I said, all right, you can take one, but you should know you'll probably find out some stuff you don't want to know. That just made her more angry, and she asked me what she would find out. I said, you'll probably find out that you have a different dad than you've always thought. But she got really mad and went into the kitchen to confront mom and dad. There was a lot of screaming and finally our mom told us all the truth and screamed that Nicole probably has a different dad. My dad already knew but the conversation really hurt him and he went to take a drive. Nicole turned to me and started saying that I was such an asshole for saying she might have a different dad and if I hadn't said it, our mom wouldn't have had to say it like that. I said that it was her fault that she went and bothered my mom about it and that she couldn't take no for an answer about the DNA test. Honestly, I do not care if Nicole has a different dad. She's always been my sister and she always will be my sister. But the way she found out was terrible. Even still, I resent the fact that she's calling me an asshole over him. So I wanted to ask here, am I? My take on stuff like this is that you should never hide stuff from your kids. I think at a certain age, both parents should have been like, you know what? She's going to grow up. She's eventually going to find out. And we want to make sure she finds out on our terms. So either it be 15, 18, whatever that age you guys decide to tell her. But I think it's wrong to deceive your kids and make them... Like, like you're gaslighting them by saying, why would you take those tests? Like, what are you trying to find out? Am I wrong for walking out of my sister's birthday party after she announced she was pregnant? Growing up, my sister, 26, and I, 23 female, were not that close. She was my parents' favorite daughter. I have always been a little overweight. I had PCOS, and my sister was slim and fit. I always held that resentment towards her, especially when she belittled me with my mom. Not letting me eat more than one serving of dinner or more than one serving of dessert. Telling me that sleeping in was making me gain weight. She always overshadowed my accomplishments. My sister married when she was 23 to a wealthy man 28 from our community. We're Indian. Her marriage was arranged. They have three beautiful kids. I love my niece and nephew more than anything. I married my husband 26 two years ago and we have been trying for a baby for almost one year. My sister always said it's because I brought shame to my parents for marrying outside our culture that I couldn't have a baby. After many negative tests, a few months ago we finally had a positive pregnancy test. Unfortunately, when I was four months, I had a miscarriage. I was devastated. I couldn't believe what was going on. Two months after our tragedy, my family threw my sister a birthday party. There, she and her husband announced they were pregnant. My heart did ache, but I was happy for them. As the evening went on, my sister kept making comments like, we weren't even trying for a baby. It's so funny how we get pregnant so easily. Just as I thought things couldn't get worse, we were standing with my cousins when my sister said, we didn't even want more kids. I was almost contemplating having an abortion. She said all of that while looking at me. I am all for women having abortions, but having my sister use it as a weapon against me. Showing off how fertile she is, as she was contemplating having an abortion after they decided to keep the baby and announce it. That really hurt me. I was so upset and frustrated. My husband noticed the change in my emotions immediately. We said goodbye to my parents and left the party immediately. I got many texts from my sister and our cousins calling me jealous and an asshole for walking out on my sister's birthday party and not being part of their pregnancy celebration. What? My husband and our friends say that I had all the right to feel the way I did, but I'm not sure. So, am I the asshole? No, your sister is literally the worst person in this earth. She is so jealous of you. It's so clear and obvious for some reason that, like, she's so bitter in her own life that she just has to shove it all down your throat. People like that, when they have problems within their own life, they have satisfaction by just bullying other people. That's what bully is. I on my boyfriend's bed after I found out he was cheating on me. And I lit his car on fire. Disclaimer is not my story time. Instead of me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I met in high school. He chased me for about three years. This man would tell me every single day that he was in love with me. This was before Instagram. So he would contact me every single day through Facebook. He would send me his favorite songs. He would write me poems. I mean, you can tell this guy was totally obsessed, right? After four years of this, I finally said yes to a date. And the only reason I kept saying no was because I knew somebody that had dated him and they told me that he was crazy. I just didn't want to believe it because he seemed so perfect over Facebook. At the time, I was living in Manhattan, so I told him that I wanted the date to be in the city. So he took me to watch a show on Broadway. First off, I was really impressed that he could even afford the tickets because they were to a very expensive show. And before the show, he took me to a really nice dinner. And he proceeded to order everything on the menu. Five appetizers, four main entrees, and a bunch of drinks. The bill came out to about $600. I offered to help him pay, but he said no, as he should. The entire date was really amazing. The only thing that I know now was a red flag is that he was kind of rude to the waiter. Of course, I didn't mention it. Fast forward 
forward a few months and he asked me to be his girlfriend. Now, to be honest, I was dating a few other guys at the time and they were all really great, but none of them wanted a serious relationship and that's what I was looking for. So I finally said yes to my ex. Around that time, I started competing in pageants and I got very far. I went to Miss USA. Can you guess who I am? We love this. Part two is up. I pooped on my boyfriend's bed after I found out he was cheating on me and lit his car on fire. Disclaimers and now my story time was sending me on Instagram. After he asked me to be his girlfriend, I decided to start competing in pageants and I got pretty far. I won my state and went on to Miss USA. At that point, my ex and I had been together for about a year. To my face, he always told me that he was so proud of me. He loved that I was so dedicated and disciplined. Get ready to compete. I would work out twice a day. I also had a bunch of classes and held down a full-time job. Here's when things start getting complicated. One night, our friends had to get together at their house. Our entire friend group were there and I invited my best friend. Now, my best friend has always had my back. She is my ride or die. Her and I went to the kitchen to get some drinks and when she went back to where my boyfriend was standing, she overheard the conversation he was having with another friend. Apparently, my boyfriend was telling the other friend that I was crazy, that he thought I had eating disorders because I would work out so much, and that I thought I was better than everybody else because I was competing for Miss USA. My best friend ran over to the kitchen to tell me everything she heard. At first, I thought, are you sure he wasn't joking? She said no, he was completely serious. I was really hurt. Instead of waiting for the party to be over, I confronted him right then and there. I asked him if he was talking bad about me, and then he said no, of course not. And I told him the whole conversation that my best friend overheard. But I told him that I was the one that overheard the conversation. That's when he started gaslighting me. He said that I was overreacting, that I had completely twisted his words. I asked him exactly what he said, and he told me he couldn't remember. I asked him point blank if he felt envious of me, and he said no. He said, you have to get over yourself if you think you're that important. Uh, part three is I pooped on my boyfriend's bed after I found out he was cheating on me and lit his car on fire. This camera's not my story time. It's been on Instagram. After I caught him talking bad about me, he denied everything. And he also told me that I needed to get over myself. I grabbed my best friend and went home. So that means my boyfriend stayed at the party by himself. Well, guess what he does? He goes out of his way to find a girl to hook up with. And I know this now because a few of my friends who were at the party saw everything go down. Apparently after I left, he started scouting all the girls. He would go up to each one of them and talk to them. Finally, he went upstairs with one of them. I mean, he couldn't even go somewhere else. He had to do it in front of all of our friends. Multiple people watched this all happen. And most of them knew that we had gotten into a fight before. One of the girls that was at the party actually messaged me and told me that my boyfriend was in the bedroom with another girl. So I ran back to the party. He was already downstairs at that point, but I asked him if it was true. At this point, he had a lot to drink. That's when he starts word vomiting, telling me that he had hooked up with girls that were way better than I was, and that I was so consumed with my pageant competition and that I was too skinny. Then he just started listing all of the girls that he had slept with, and two of them were my friends who were at the party. What I did next is probably not the best idea, but I did it. I grabbed a bottle of alcohol and went outside with the lighter. I poured it all over his car and set it on fire. Then I got back into my car with my best friend and went to his apartment. And it just so happens that I needed to poop at the time. So I thought just to do it in his bed. So I squatted over his bed and did my business. Then he messaged me telling me that he was going to press charges on me for his car. Luckily, nobody told on me, so he had zero proof. And luckily, his car was fine. A few months later, he messaged me apologizing. He said that I was the best thing that ever happened to him. But I ignored his messages. No, I didn't win Miss USA. But I'm proud of myself for what I did to him. Bye. Am I wrong for wearing all white to my best friend's wedding and refusing to apologize? My 30 female best friend, 32 female, invited us, husband and I, to go on vacation with them to a paradise island. She told me to bring the dress I wore to my anniversary dinner for the special dinner event she planned during the vacation. I said sure. I also recently gave birth and that dress is a very elegant black lace over nude dress that is very classy but also form fitting. When I tried it on when packing, I realized it wasn't as flattering and I had a hard time fitting. So instead, I packed a cute, semi-formal white lace dress instead. I figured it was close enough. I arrived to the event and found out it was a surprise wedding where she only invited like 20 guests on the beach. She hadn't told me it was her wedding because of an inside joke. I kept telling them to get married and watch, they will elope and the next thing we know, they are married. She was horrified and so was I. I didn't bring any other dress, plus there was no time to change or buy a new one. Also, surprise, I'm the maid of honor. I offered to either not be the maid of honor or leave the wedding, but she'd rather me not. Later, she blamed me for ruining her wedding because I didn't follow her instructions to wear a specific dress and didn't tell her about changing my mind. I said I'm sorry her wedding was ruined, but it wasn't my fault and she should have told me it was her wedding and at the time of packing, I didn't find it appropriate to get her approval on my outfit. Okay, aren't this all could have been preventable and you could have kept it a secret? First of all, I would not let my best friend or maid of honor wear the same dress that I've seen her wear. I would have been like, hey, let's go out. Let's go shopping for our vacation. Let's find some cute dresses for the beach. I would have helped her find a dress to be my maid of honor without her knowing that she's going to be my maid of honor. Am I wrong for telling my husband off for wanting me to let my infertile brother-in-law and his wife experience childbirth by being with me in the delivery room? My husband's brother, 37, and his wife, 35, struggled with infertility for years. After trying so much for long, they decided to stop. 
But they started sort of living the experience of having a child by doing the things that parents do, like getting a nursery, buying baby clothes, toys, attending school shows, etc. It's a little creepy. I'm seven months pregnant, and brother-in-law and sister-in-law have been asking so many questions on what it's like to be expecting. It was bothersome with them getting involved, but I grinned and bared till they requested to be with me in the delivery room to experience the childbirth. I said no and stood firm, but later discovered that my husband volunteered his place to give his brother and his wife a chance to have this experience. Brother-in-law and sister-in-law came over later to try to talk me into it. I nicely said no, but they pushed me, so I blew up, telling them their fertility problems aren't my fault, and told them to get therapy. Harsh, I know, and I regret saying it. My sister-in-law started crying. Brother-in-law asked me to take time to think, but I rudely said there was nothing to think about and my mind's already been made. They left and my husband started raging. After yelling at me about how this is his child too and how rude and dismissive I was to his grieving and struggling brother and wife, he told me to look him in the eyes and tell him if I would be happy to ruin his brother's marriage when I can do this small yet graceful deed and help brother-in-law and wives process their trauma and finally make peace with it. That's not your job, what the fudge? I felt so much anger, I cried. He told me to get over myself already and stop being purposefully selfish and petty. We're not talking now and he says it stays this way till I say yes. I might have acted cruel, but I just wanted him as the father of my child to be with me and don't feel comfortable with my brother-in-law and sister-in-law being there. Yeah, because your legs are like this. So I understand if you're not comfortable when you're pushing a baby out of your body for the first time and don't want no one else besides your husband. Like, what is... Am I wrong for getting upset with my best friend's son for giving my son cake? My son is 8 years old and recently attended his friend's 8th birthday party. This friend is my best friend's son. I don't let my son have any junk food at all and he usually brings his own snacks to events that have a lot of sugary foods. Oh, you know, I don't like judging parents and stuff with, like their kids, but their kids let them have some sugar. My best friend bakes a lot and made a special chocolate cake for her son's birthday. When it comes to my son, I don't let him have cake. This is personal preference for his health, not for any allergy reasons, and he is not diabetic or gluten-free. My son knows he isn't allowed to have cake because of the additives. When he told his best friend this at the party, his friend apparently got upset and told him it was good cake, not bad like I say, because his mom made it and it was his birthday cake. My son ate the cake, got a sugar rush, and crashed, making him cranky for the rest of the day after we left the party. I told my friend she needs to have some kind of consequence for her son to teach him not to peer pressure other children into eating things they're not allowed to have. She said because it wasn't an issue of allergies or health that she's sorry my son was cranky but she won't be punishing her son or talking to him about it on his birthday. She also says that she'll just watch more closely and make sure her husband does in the future as well as have a chat with him on another day about respecting food habits. I love my friend but historically her and her husband have always said yes to their son and not given him any consequences for anything. Both of us were present at the party and did not see the them sharing the cake. They were outside eating in the backyard with their fathers and some other parents supervising while we cleaned up. Both of us were present at the party and did not see them sharing the cake, so it's not an issue of anyone going behind anyone's back, just teaching children boundaries and respect. I let my son stay for the rest of the party and be with his friends, so it's not like I ruined the day. So, am I the asshole for being upset with my friend's son and the fact that she won't punish her son for pressuring my son into eating cake? You're at a birthday party! God forbid you experience some joy in your life. Am I the asshole for calling the police on my coworker over a prank? I, 25 female, just started this new job as a front desk clerk at a hotel. I work on the overnight shift and I usually have a coworker, 30 male, with me. He never really spoke to me and a few nights ago was my first night alone. At around 2 a.m. I noticed a person in the parking lot. They were just standing there not moving for 5 to 10 minutes. Also, the lighting was terrible and I couldn't see their face. I thought this was strange and it creeped me out. After 10 minutes, he moves his hand to his ear and calls the front desk. He said, five buried, none found, in a low voice, and they hung up. At this point, I was terrified. Am I the asshole for calling the police on my coworker over a prank? At this point, I was terrified, so I ran to the back room and called 911. When they arrived, one cop was talking to the person outside, and the other one was at the front desk talking to me. They said the person outside was claiming they worked here. I was confused, but I admitted I only saw the silhouette. The other officer and the person from the lot came in, and it turns out to be my coworker. He was upset, saying he never would have pranked me if he knew I was going to call the police and try to get him arrested. I didn't go through with pressing charges, but I did tell my manager what happened in the morning. It's been a few days, and I guess he told the other coworkers what happened, and no one's speaking to me. Am I the asshole for getting mad at my friends for trying to get me to drink at a get-together? I, 23 male, am a recovering alcoholic and I haven't drank in a bit over a year. Being sober is very important to me and I don't ever want to drink again. 
Anyways, my friends from high school invited me to one of their houses. I was conflicted, but I hadn't seen them in a while, so I said whatever and went. I found out they were drinking when I showed up, which I expected and didn't really mind because I'm at the point where I'm comfortable going to events with alcohol. Anyway, they kept asking if I was going to drink, and I told them no and explained why, but they didn't get it. When they realized they wouldn't change my mind, they stopped, and I asked my friend who was supposed to be grab me. I'm gonna 